A 14-year-old Muslim boy was arrested in Texas this week for doing science. We all know how Texans feel about science. Okay, no, to be more accurate, he was arrested for building a clock that someone thought might be a bomb. And we all know that clocks are an integral part of the bombs we see on television. Without the clock part, how would we ever know how much time we have left to run away or to cut the green wire or to hacksaw off our own arm? The good news is that the boy, Ahmed Mohammed, is getting a huge outpouring of support from the internet, including from the President of the United States, who has invited him to bring his clock to the White House. That's probably not going to ease the minds of the Texas school administrators, who I assume believe that Barack Obama is also a Muslim and just wants to see Muhammad's death clock so that he can examine it and put it into mass production in order to take away Texans' guns somehow. This is all reminiscent of Kira Wilmot, the 16-year-old black Floridian who was arrested for causing an unauthorized chemical reaction in a science lab. The reaction made a pop sound and put out a bit of smoke. And for that, she was suspended and arrested. I know that it's a bit of a tired trope at this point to say in my day, but in my day, a chemistry teacher let my friends write their name in cursive in a flamm flammable liquid on a table and then set it on fire. And as I mentioned in a previous video, just prior to my day when 18-year-olds could drink, my biology teacher let them brew beer as their final senior project. Of course, also in my day, we had jarts or lawn darts, which were a deadly projectile that you were encouraged to hurl at the faces of your siblings as a fun summertime activity. And when I say deadly, I'm not kidding. Children were murdered with this toy, with lawn darts. And even our friendly, quote unquote, girlier toys were also super dangerous, like the Easy Bake Oven, which may as well have come with a recipe card for baked children's fingers, especially dangerous when combined with, you know, the traditional rainbow bright, highly flammable sleeping bag. And then there was even a snack time Cabbage Patch Kid that was meant to look like it was eating little plastic snacks using metal rollers in its mouth. You can probably guess where this is going. Everything was great until the Cabbage Patch Kids turned on our very children and began attempting to consume them with their fingers and their pieces of hair. And I mean, basically Chucky was a documentary. I guess what I'm saying is that things weren't necessarily better back in the good old days before safety regulations, so we shouldn't be fooled by that kind of false nostalgia. But we do have to be careful to walk a line between keeping our kids alive and also giving them room to make mistakes. At least, for God's sakes, giving them enough room to be curious kids who are sometimes going to make things that look like pipe bombs that are not actually pipe bombs. I mean, I'm I'm a person who travels with something that looks like a pipe bomb uh, for Quizotron. Um, if you've ever been to Quizotron, you know this is this is our our buzzer machine. This is what it looks like. This I get on airplanes with this. If I were if I were a Muslim man, I Quizertron would not exist, you guys. And I guess that brings me to the final point of all of this, which is the role that racial profiling has played in all of this. I don't think that it's any coincidence that Ahmed Mohammed has that name and has that skin color and has that religion and was arrested for making a clock. And to make matters worse, the school district sent out a letter to all of the parents, not apologizing, but instead reiterating that safety is their number one concern and that if any kids see something, they should say something. That is only reinforcing the same racial profiling that led to this kid nearly getting his life ruined. How about if you see something, ask something? because maybe you will learn how to make a cool clock 
and not accidentally ruin a kid's life.